I want you to watch this 2015 interview with that sociopath Netanyahu and what his plans are for Africa. Educational purposes Watch this only. video and I'll be right back. Great. So I suggested to um, uh, some of the European countries uh, a simple partnership. We form consortiums to deal with individual countries, help them with their economy, help them with their security. The Islamist movements in Africa are not yet strong. They can be defeated today. They can be defeated today. It'll be a lot harder tomorrow. And my point is, in addition to the battle of ideas, there's the battle. You have to win the battle. And the earlier you win it, the cheaper it will be. The longer you wait, eventually, these forces will dissipate. Because there is no hope, there is no future for a world of darkness. A world of darkness. Uh, and I think the Islamists will lose out. But it may take decades. It may take half a century. Nazism was defeated, but it claimed the life of uh, millions, tens of millions of people and a third of my people. I think defeating them early is important. We'll defeat them in the battle of ideas, but let's defeat them on the ground as well. That sociopath Netanyahu likes to use the word darkness when referring to people. Kind of weird. A lot of Yahtzee energy. But I digress. How many people in Africa are Muslims? It was estimated in 2002 that Muslims constituted 40% of the population in Africa. Islam is the main religion of North Africa, the Horn of Africa, Sahel and the Swahili Coast, and West Africa, with minority immigrant populations in South Africa. That's a lot of Muslim people. Now he has already said that he talked to European countries to come up with a coalition that they can all come together and go into Africa and do fuck what. Now I wonder what plans they carved out for Africa. Ain't the first time they carved out plans for Africa. Let's not forget the Berlin Conference of 1884 and 1885. What was the purpose of the Berlin Conference? Otto von Bismarck created the Berlin Conference to settle disputes between the European powers with interest in Africa to create pseudo borders of ownership, allowing various European nations to claim almost the entire continent, including its resources and their what? People. Mind you, there were whole civilizations in Africa, people that were living there. That was their home, their land. And the European countries had a conference to say, well, who gets a piece of uh, Nigeria? Who gets a piece of Congo? Who gets a piece of South Africa? And they went and attacked Africa and stole the land. Now that sociopath Netanyahu stated that he had a, a meeting with European countries so that they can discuss what they should do with Africa under the guise that they're going after the Islamic movement in Africa. For those who keep thinking this is isolated just in, it's not. This is not even the Zionists against the, it is colonization against the indigenous populations. This is what we're seeing right now. Everything is interconnected. Keep thinking this ain't got nothing to do with you. If we don't step up and stop what's happening in, they're coming for the world. The Palestinian struggle is not just a cry for justice. It's a blistering battle for the most fundamental human rights that every living soul on this planet should inherit by birthright. It's an unyielding resistance against the oppressive, suffocating grip of occupation and the callous denial of the most basic human dignity. Just as the civil rights movement in the United States fought against the chains of racial discrimination, so too do the Palestinian people strive to shatter the chains of occupation and tyranny. Never forget, my friends, that the Palestinians, much like African Americans in the United States, have been subjected to a heart-wrenching history of suffering and torment. 
the birth of Israel in 1948 brought forth the mass expulsion and dispossession of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians from their ancestral homes and land. This is a historic injustice that continues to haunt the lives of Palestinians to this very day. The situation in Palestine serves as a brutal reminder of the consequences of colonialism and the ruthless dispossession of indigenous people. It is an agonizing reminder that the fight for justice knows no borders and we must stand united in solidarity with all oppressed peoples, whether they reside in the United States, South Africa or anywhere.